We're excited because we recently released the Actibotics dual motor controller, our very own motor controller, and in this episode of Control Issues, I'll be walking through the different modes and how to use it. Let's jump in and take a look at mode one. Mode one is digital speed control mode. So it's gonna take a PWM signal and drive the motor proportionally depending on what that PWM signal is doing. So the first thing I'll wanna take a look at are the pins right in the center. And they have little labels. To the left it says pot, to the right it says SRV for servo. And if there are no shunts or jumpers on those pins, then you're in mode one. What you'll wanna do is you'll want to connect some sort of PWM signal to the board. So in this first example, I'm going to take a standard receiver and I'm going to plug in the receiver servo wires into input one and input two on the board. So that'll be to the right here and it'll say IN1, IN2. It's also labeled with S, positive and negative, and the S is going to be the signal, the yellow wire, and then positive and negative are the positive and the negative uh, voltage to, to power the receiver. So I'm going to hook up channel one from the receiver to input one on the board and channel two to input two. And I'm gonna plug in my battery. Now, it's worth noting that at this point in time, you can turn on the board before or after you power on the, the transmitter receiver or Arduino or wherever that signal is coming from because it is not doing any sort of uh, on boot calibration like some other motor controllers do. Uh, motor controllers like the Roboclaw motor controllers, you really want to turn on the transmitter first and have it be the last thing you turn off. Um, but in this case, it doesn't matter. So I have channel one and channel two fully proportional forward and reverse for both motors. So it's taking a signal from 1,000 to 2,000 microseconds to control the speed and direction of the motors. Halfway in between 1,500 microseconds is dead stop. And then depending on which direction you vary from that center and how far you vary from the center will control the speed and direction. Let's go ahead and disconnect that and take a look at controlling it from an Arduino. This is an Arduino Uno, and I've preloaded the sweep sketch that comes standard in the examples folder of the Arduino IDE. I've made a small modification, two small modifications actually. One, I've duplicated some of the code so that I can drive two servos, in this case motors, send out two PWM signals essentially. Um, and I've also changed where you attach the servo. You can add some additional variables to tell it the range of the, the PWM signal, the pulse, pulse width modulation signal that it's sending out. So the default is 544 to 2000 microseconds. And while that works, just fine with our board. Our board is designed to have 1,000 to 2,000, so I figured I'd make a slight change to set that as the range. Now you can power this Arduino separately with its own little power supply, something like this from Adafruit, and then nine volt battery go into the, the barrel jack. Or you can power it directly from the battery that's powering our board here. So we're gonna go ahead and throw in some wires here. And I'm just putting these right where the battery plugs in to the battery screw terminal here and the Actibotics dual motor controller. I'm gonna put plug the negative end of the battery into ground. And I'm gonna plug the positive end of the battery into VN on the board. And the Arduino will uh, be able to handle the 12 volts from our battery. And it doesn't matter that the battery uh, can supply a ton of amps. Um, it's only a matter of how many amps the, the board will draw from it. So it's not going to pop out or give a certain number of amps. It's that many are available for, for whatever you're plugging in to draw from the battery. So the more amps, the better, generally speaking. So I have two more wires here, and these will be for our signals. Now, since we don't need to power the Arduino from the 5 volt here, I actually prefer to go to VN um, straight from the battery. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the yellow wire into pin 9. And that'll be input 1. I'm going to plug it into the S pin on IN1 on the board. 
and then pin 10 will be this white wire and that'll be for input 2. Great, now when I plug this in it should basically turn the motors back and forth because that's what the code has been set up to do. So that's mode one. Mode one, digital speed control. Essentially, you're controlling the speed of the motors and the direction of the motors with a PWM, a pulse with modulation signal. Let's go ahead and jump into mode two. To switch to mode two, you need to put a shunt or jumper onto the pot side of these mode pins here. So the rightmost two pins and you have to do that when the board is powered down because when the board turns on, then it, that's when it's gonna look at those pins to see what mode it should go into. Mode two is analog speed control mode. In analog speed control mode, the board will look at an incoming voltage between zero and 3.3 volts. Halfway in between uh, will be 1.65 volts and that'll make the motor stop. Zero volts will turn the motor all the way uh, at full speed in one direction and 3.3 volts will turn it in full speed in the opposite direction. To get that incoming voltage, usually what you use is a variable potentiometer, like our Actibotics potentiometer board A. I've got two set up in the front here, and let's go ahead and take a look at plugging them in. The first thing I'd like to note is I have modified two servo wires here, because like most potentiometers, the, the wiper, or the part that moves back and forth inside the potentiometer to change that voltage, is in the middle, so that acts as the signal. And then you can apply the positive and negative voltage to either the top or bottom pins on the potentiometer board. And that's pretty standard for potentiometers, to have that wiper in the middle. But on the input signals here, you need to have the signal on one end and positive and negative together on the other side. And that's pretty standard when plugging in signals like servo wire signals. So generally these will have the yellow wire all the way to one end and the, the positive and negative adjacent to it. What I've gone ahead and done here on, on these two wires is I've pulled out that yellow pin and moved it around to the center so that I can be going from the potentiometer to the board. So you want to take note of that and not plug this in the wrong way or accidentally use this in a different application. So to switch those wires around in the lead of the servo wire, then what you'll find is next to each of these wires, there's a little plastic tab that if you can get your exacto underneath it, you can lift up that tab and the wire will just pull right out. So I'm lifting up the tab here for the red wire and now I can just pull that out. And you do that for each of the wires you want to take out and then to put them back in, you simply push it in and it'll snap into place. So let's go ahead and take our modified servo wires and plug in the potentiometers. Now the end with the yellow wire in the middle will go on the potentiometer board. And the other end will go up here on the potentiometer, potentiometer male header row pins on the left. I'm going to plug this one into P2 because this is motor 2 coming out on the right side. And you'll want to make sure that the yellow wire in here is towards the P label on the board. And that the red and black wire line up with the positive and negative signs respectively. Next, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the other potentiometer. We should be good to go. So if I position these pots just right, I can get the motor to stop. And I have proportional speed control in both directions for both motors. Next, I'm going to skip forward to mode 4, since mode 3 is split mode, which is essentially a combination of digital speed control, which is mode 1 that we already talked about, and position control mode, which is mode four. So let's go ahead and talk about position control mode. Mode four is position control mode. It's gonna make your motor act like a big servo. It's gonna take an analog input from a potentiometer and it's gonna take a digital input, a PWM signal, and use them together to act like a giant servo. So the way it does that is by taking a PWM signal and an analog voltage and using them as your target and current position respectively. If the target and current position don't line up, the motor controller will move the motor until they match. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. First, I want to point out that it'll the direction that the motor is turning will make a difference 
Um, and so the direction you hook up your motor and the direction that you hook up this potentiometer will both make a difference because when the signal is in the middle you can either hook it up with the uh, red and black to the top and bottom respectively or vice versa. It doesn't really make a difference except for it'll change what direction the motor turns when you turn the potentiometer in a particular direction. So I've modified this servo lead just like we've previously talked about to connect this potentiometer. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in to P1 and then I'm going to plug the other end to our potentiometer. I'm going to go ahead and plug the motor in. So before I physically link these two, I want to make sure that we're going in the proper direction so that it's not uh, going to turn counterclockwise when it's supposed to turn clockwise or else it'll never find the correct position and it'll just free spin. And on a potentiometer like this that has a fixed amount of rotation, you'll break a potentiometer. So let's go ahead and plug it in. The way to determine whether you're hooked up in the right direction or not is by turning the potentiometer in the same direction that the motor would turn it and seeing if that makes it spin faster or slower. So the idea is that if you turn this in the same direction as the, the motor and the motor slows down or you can stop it, you're, in the, you're hooked up correctly. But if turning it in the same direction as the motor would turn it makes it spin faster or, or never stops it, you're hooked up backwards. In this case, I'm hooked up backwards. So I could either reverse this or reverse this. I'm going to go ahead and reverse the pot here. And now when I turn the pot, we're um, simulating this being out of sync. The target and the current positions are out of sync. So if I pretend that my hand is the motor here and I turn it in the direction the motor is trying to turn it, I can bring that motor to a stop. So I know that now we're hooked up in, in the correct uh, orientation. So now I can go ahead and bolt my potentiometer in place. And I'm going to disconnect the power and we're going to go ahead and plug in a signal source. So I'm going to take a RC or PWM signal from this RC controller and plug it in as we did before. This is plugged into input one and the potentiometer is plugged into P1 and we're controlling motor one with it. So I'm going to power on my transmitter and apply power to my system here. And now I can proportionally control the position with the gimbal on this transmitter. So you'll notice that this is a 437 RPM gear motor turning a potentiometer that has a rotation range of about 270 degrees. So this is about a worst case scenario. So you'll, see, you'll notice some springiness in this as it overshoots and tries to correct itself. In most cases, you'll never see that. Um, this uses PID for a closed loop system and this is mode four. I also mentioned I'd come back and talk about mode three. As I mentioned before, mode three or split mode is a combination of the digital speed control and the position control. So we've set up our position control and now we can optionally set up this extra motor here on the side uh, on the second channel as the digital speed control. So I'm going to disconnect my battery and I'm going to connect my servo lead to our receiver here on channel 2 and reconnect the battery and now channel 1 will control the position of motor 1 and channel 2 will control the speed and direction of motor 2 so this would be great for a steering type of car setup where you have the drive motor and the steering control motor. So one real quick example of that would be, now this is a smaller than usual power wheel. So normally I'd recommend having a full size uh, or larger than this version of a power wheels to do a project like this and having the linear actuator uh, perpendicular to the steering column. But in this case, I uh, grabbed the one that I had and, and put it together as an example. So what we've done is we have an Actibotics dual motor controller board here. 
and we are in mode three, split mode, and, and which you can tell by the shunter jumper being on the right two pins next to SRV for servo mode. And we've got the potentiometer from the linear actuator plugged in to P1 because it's a, it has a potentiometer uh, built into the linear actuator. And then we have the motor hooked into motor one here. So the red and black wires coming from the linear actuator control the brushed DC motor. And it's just a, like any other brushed DC motor, you can go forward and reverse, and that will turn the gears and it'll, it'll turn a a threaded shaft inside of there with a nut on it that moves the, the column in and out. Um, and that's all most people use uh, on our linear actuators, or at least a majority of the time they don't take advantage of the uh, variable potentiometer for feedback on the position. Um, and you don't need to worry about which direction this is uh, going to travel at first like you did when we are connecting the potentiometer directly to motor because a linear actuator will have limit switches to keep it from running the, the thread on the threaded shaft too far in either direction. So hit that limit switch and turn off until you reverse polarity and bring it back the other direction. Um, so if it doesn't work at first, you can simply swap the red and black motor wires, um, which will not hurt the motor because it's reversible, and uh, then you should be going in the proper direction. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, and power up our transmitter. So the thing to notice here is that when I let go and the gimbal goes back to center, so does the linear actuator. Because it's closed loop and has that feedback, um, it's completely proportional. So just to go over those, those four different modes one last time, mode one is with no jumpers on the pins and it's going to control both channels via a PWM signal coming from any sort of source that can put out a 1000 to 2000 microsecond pulse width modulation. Mode 2 has one jumper or shunt on the left two pins next to the label POT and that's going to control both channels uh, via an analog input, uh, usually from a potentiometer. Mode 3 is going to have one jumper or shunt on the right two most pins next to SRV for servo mode and it's going to be a split mode where channel 1 is going to have position control like a servo and channel 2 is going to have digital speed control. And finally mode 4 is with both jumpers or shunts in place on all four pins and this is going to control both channels like servos in a position control mode style. It's also worth noting one of the best things about the Activotix dual motor controller is that it fits nicely inside of our channel and bolts right to our Activotix pattern. We hope you get lots of great use out of this product and as always we're happy to answer your questions. Just send an email to tech at servocity.com or give us a call. Control Issues is brought to you by RobotZone, inventing the parts for your ideas. And ServoCity.com, the place to go to buy the parts for your projects. If you've got questions or ideas for future episodes, send an email to tech at ServoCity.com.